So good morning, my friends. Welcome to the fourth Sunday of Easter as we continue to celebrate with these online liturgies. We're delighted that you have been able to join us uh, again today. As you can see, we are from uh, Holy Trinity Church in, in Wagaba, First Nation, and I'm very happy to uh, to be here today with uh, with Betty and Louis Joe and Deacon Berkeley as we begin. Today, of course, is Good Shepherd Sunday, so we are going to begin with the Lord, my shepherd, rules my life. I'll lead that this morning. Just a reminder that if, um, if after the liturgy this morning uh, you want to stay tuned a little bit, we have a little video greeting from the folks at St. Joseph's Parish that will be tagged on at the end of the Mass this morning. So we begin with the Lord, my shepherd, rules my life. The Lord, my shepherd, rules my life and gives me all I need. He leads me by refreshing streams in pastures green I feel. The Lord revives my faith. You were sent to heal a contrite heart. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins. And bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. 
Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen, amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. First reading, a reading from the Acts of Apostles. When the day of Pentecost has come, Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. And when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart. He said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who, who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So, so those who welcomed this message were baptized. And that day were added about 3,000 souls. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, and he leads me Besides still waters, he restores my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me in the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. You rod in your staff to comfort me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You prepared a table for us in the presence of my enemies. You anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you endured when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For this, this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you shall follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten. But he entrusted himself to be one who judges justly. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you are, were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know, know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Many of us have stood before this altar holding the hand of the one we love and we declared, I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love you and to honor you all the days of my life. As parents and as godparents, we have brought our children to these baptismal waters where we were asked, in doing so, you are accepting the responsibility of training your children in the practice of the faith. It will be your duty to bring them up to keep God's commandments as Christ taught us by loving God and our neighbor. Do you clearly understand what you are undertaking? And we promised we do. As family and friends, we will in the coming months be able to once again bring our loved ones who have died here, where we will hear the prayer, O God, Almighty Father, who have strengthened us by the mystery of the cross and promise us a share in the mystery of your Son's resurrection. Mercifully grant, we pray, that your departed servant may be gathered into the company of your chosen ones. As a young boy, I began to work in our family store with my parents. One day, a man came in and asked to see my father. He seemed very nervous and unsure. As he told my father about the hard times he was having finding work and in providing for his family. He then asked my father for a grocery order to help feed his family and that it would have to be on credit until his work started again. My father filled two boxes, making sure that there were some candy for the kids. And then the man said, thank you. I promise I will pay you back. And as he reached out his hand to shake my father's hand, I noticed the man's hand. It was large and had calluses and cuts. And yet, when he shook my father's hand, it was firm and gentle. Over the past weeks, we have experienced the promise of the office taken by our municipal, provincial, and federal leaders to uphold the dignity and the safety and the livelihoods of their citizens. We have witnessed the promise made by our frontline workers to care for, 
to service and to protect those who are ill, suffering and dying. We have been supported by the promise of our brothers and sisters by being good neighbors and community members who have self who have self isolated, lit a candle or offered a helping hand. And yet, brothers and sisters in Christ, we have also experienced broken promises within our relationships with our family, friends and community. These broken promises have at times been our fault in which we had to say, I'm sorry. And when others had broken their promise to us, we offered them our forgiveness. These are the realities of our life. And yet there is a promise made to each one of us that will never be broken. And that promise is that God loves each one of us. This promise of God was made to us. And as we read in Leviticus from the Old Testament, and I will walk among you and will be your God and you shall be my people. And as we heard in our first reading from Acts, for the promise is for you, for your children and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. God's promise came to us in the person of God's most beloved son, Jesus, who, as we hear in our second reading from Peter, is to be our example so that we should follow in his steps. I think that many of us would have, would have found it difficult and strange to see ourselves follow the footsteps and ministry of Jesus before the events of the coronavirus and the tragedy that took the lives of 22 of our brothers and sisters two weeks ago. But these realities of the past two months have caused each of us to reassess, refocus, and reflect on the true promise of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How often do we see Jesus go off by himself to self-isolate himself in prayer with his heavenly Father before he returns to his disciples and the wider community who longed for his presence. The life of Jesus is centered on the promise that he came to serve and not to be served. Jesus journeys within the relationships of his disciples, just as he journeys in a relationship with each one of us. Each one of us has the promise that God will never that we will never be left alone or abandoned. Jesus is always with us. In our gospel this morning, we heard the wonderful image of Jesus as the good shepherd, an image that speaks to our very hearts during these strange and challenging days. On our trip to the Holy Land, we saw shepherds in the fields with their flocks. Some were children, or older men helping their families. But our guide told us that these shepherds would never shout. They speak softly as the sheep follow because they know their voice. And they have come to trust where he will lead them. And when the shepherd uses his staff, it is not to strike or harm the sheep, but to tenderly nudge them in the right direction or to remove danger like a thorn bush or to run off a danger. A shepherd would often carry a weak or injured sheep until they regained their strength. And they would often go off in search of one that got lost or left behind. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the promise of Jesus as our good shepherd is that he speaks softly to each of us in our prayers, conversations and in the quiet of our hearts. We must allow ourselves to hear his voice and then to have the courage, the trust, the faith and the hope to follow him. For he will lead us to safety and peace. The hurt and sufferings of the past weeks are not a sign of a shepherd striking or hurting us. 
but within, but within these dark realities of life, we must look through the promise of our faith that Jesus, the Good Shepherd, is carrying each one of us as a community and in our own personal way. These arms of Jesus are your arms. The smile of Jesus are your smiles. The comforting words of Jesus are your words. The tears of Jesus are your tears. And the presence of Jesus is the presence of each one of us, despite our self-isolation and social distancing. Jesus is the promise that our faith will sustain us, that our trust in him will never be broken. And it is his promise that he will help each one of us navigate these days and the moments of transition in our lives with the grace, hope, and love of our God and the love, care, compassion, and mercy of each other. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, filled with pastoral joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that he who graciously listened to the prayers and the supplications of his beloved son may now be pleased to look upon us in our loneliness for the church that we community believers may be a sign of the risen christ's presence in the midst of the human global struggles we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer for all local national and global leaders that the light of the risen christ grant them insight courage, and wisdom in guarding the common good in decisions to ease our present restrictions and reopen the economy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who work to restore life and bring healing, for medical personnel, for counselors, and for chaplains. That God will guide them as they journey with those in pain and preserve them from harm. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering from natural disasters, especially those facing the struggles of the flooding in Fort McMurray. That God will be a shepherd to them, guide them to assist that they need, and sustain them as they recover. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Christians, that we who have been called to follow Christ may lift to God those who cause us to suffer and refrain from threatening, insulting, and judging them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For all who are discerning a call to ministry, 
that they will recognize God's invitation, open their hearts to God who loves them, and follow Jesus in laying down their life for others. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, we know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need. Hear the desires of those who cry to you and receive the prayers of those who believe in you. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you, Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Let's be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of the hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good God's holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Your Lord, Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks he said the blessing he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. 
And he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Wayne Joseph, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Nujanin wasso gaven, Jiptuk de lewisin, Megadin megwasso pedalin, Jiptuk it muli wangalo, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. The 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to God's name. Spread the good news over all the earth. Jesus has died and has risen. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his Hi folks, it's your friendly neighborhood parish administrative assistant, Carol Newman. I realize during these times that uh, our parish office is closed to the public, but our parish office is still actually open via phone, email. So uh, you have any questions, you wanna arrange for envelope pickup, you drop off, you can always just drop, drop me a line with the email at st.joe.ph at ns.sympatico, S-Y-M-P-A-T-I-C-O dot C-A. Or give me a buzz, 902-625-1045. And if you call and I don't answer right away, just leave me a voicemail, because sometimes I'm a little slow getting around the desk. Okay. Hi everyone, it's Nancy Day from St. Joseph's Parish. Just dropping by, virtually of course, hoping this message finds everyone well healthy and safe in their homes. I hope everyone continues to do what our government and health officials are telling us to do to keep each other safe. I know these past month and maybe especially this past weekend, people are riddled with an extreme amount of anxiety over what has occurred in our province. I beg of you if you feel alone that you reach out to one another because I am sure that you're not alone and most of us are feeling the same way. Uh, please know that I miss and love each and every one of you. I think about you often. I pray for you often. Uh, I can't wait until we come together again as a faith community so we can physically give each other a hug when we see each other. To our young people, I surely miss seeing your beautiful faces each and every week. Continue to be brave, stay at home, stay and connect with your family, continue to do your prayers, and we will come together very soon, I hope, to celebrate the sacrament of First Eucharist and First Reconciliation. 
So to everyone watching, wherever it may be, please keep faith and continue to be a light for one another. And remember, this too shall pass. Love you all. Stay safe and healthy until we see each other again. Hello, everyone. This is Deacon Berkeley here. It's a wonderful opportunity to be able to say hello to you and to your families during this this difficult time. Father Conrad and I are continuing to find ways to reach out to you and to your families uh, each week through our, our liturgies. But we also want you to know that, again, we are here for you. Um, if you wish to talk to us, you can call the office and make arrangements, um, and we'll certainly get in touch uh, with you. We continue to wish you and your families the very best during this difficult time. And again, we want you to always be aware that you are not alone, that Jesus walks with each of us, and if we can help you in any way, we certainly are willing. God bless. Good afternoon. It's Marie McNeil, the chair of the Parish Council, Pastoral Council, just here to bring greetings from the Pastoral Council. First of all, I want to thank Deacon Berkeley and Father for keeping Masses going and keeping us all uh, connected to our church that way. Also to the CWL and the Knights of Columbus who have been doing the rosary online. That's extremely important to those people who are at home and no contact with the outside world these days. Just a reminder to call your family and friends often and to offer assistance where we can. People really need to be in touch. And just from the few calls we've made from members of the parish council to some of our community, they're so grateful for that telephone call just to break up their day. The other day when I was looking for something to pray with, when we did made those calls, I found this little prayer and I thought it was so appropriate for these times. It's a prayer for inner strength. It says, Dear God, please give us the strength to endure the situation and to find the blessings and lessons it contains. Give us the strength to endure and go ahead. Please guide our thoughts, our words, our actions, so that we walk in the path of peace and love. Amen. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Hi, it's Father Conrad. Well, that was just a little video greeting from us here at St. Joseph's to you, to let you know how much that we really miss seeing you in person. We are indeed grateful that we can continue to reach out in this way. We continue to do so with our online bulletin, through our masses on YouTube and Facebook, uh, through the My Parish app, and through our email list. If there's other ways that we can continue to reach out to you, we would be happy and just um, happy to, to have a conversation with you. We're delighted that so many of you continue to reach out by email or phone calls. It's really wonderful to be in touch with you that way. I want to say thank you to all of you who've continued to support the parish um, in all kinds of ways. Uh, your generosity is very well marked and, and greatly appreciated. Thank you for that. I really do want to say thank you to our pastoral staff, to Carolina, to Nancy, and to Deacon Berkeley for sure, and also to our pastoral council, and to our Knights of Columbus and our Catholic Women's League. Those two organizations have agreed to um, lead us in rosary every, every Wednesday evening, and we have those online. We hope that you'll be able to join us in those ways as well. Next Sunday, Mother's Day, we will be offering you a, a Mother's Day blessing. It'll be a drive through um, a bit unusual, I guess, but it's what we can do in these socially distant times. So that will be between 1 o'clock and 2 o'clock next Sunday afternoon here in the church parking lot. And we will send out a little more information this week, but basically we'll have you approach from the McLaughlin Street entrance and drive through and come down onto Granville Street. We hope that you will be able to come and join us with that. But most of all, we just want to say that we really miss you. And if we can reach out and be helpful to you in any way, please do not hesitate to be in touch with us. And we wish you God's blessing and God's peace until we can be together again physically. In the meantime, let us continue to serve our God by serving one another. Amen.